Who else? Um, I guess I'll go next, Daniela. Um, I'm quarantined in a house with my partner, my roommate, and our friend who doesn't even live here. So um, we're kind of trying to figure out how to stay emotionally healthy in a full house of adults with like a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different situations. Um, but we're also having a lot of fun. So I think I would like to make some fun content with them to share. Cool. And interns, you can just say, I forced you to do it. That's totally fine. Uh, I'll probably do mine about uh, what I'm doing to stay uh, physically and emotionally healthy um, because there's like a lot of different things that you can do, but um, not like all of them are actually healthy. Like you can do a lot of things to try and cope with it, but not everything is going to be good things to do, you know? So, mm -hmm. uh, talking about how I personally am, um, staying like in a good mindset during all this negative time, it would be really interesting and might help people. Awesome. Holly. Holly. Hey, um, so my work started um, mandatory or I guess semi-voluntary teleworking from home today. So working from home is a new thing for me, so I haven't really had to answer most of these questions yet. But what we're doing to stay, um, I guess, focused since Spencer works from home too is I'm upstairs in a totally separate area. <laughs> <laughs> we're not distracting each other yeah so my wife and i work in the same in the same office and i guess i'm kind of an irritating office mate is that true jessica i don't think so <laughs> not at all maybe we're both just irritating office mates though uh, yeah could be <laughs> laura um I am an artist manager, and my artists are based both here in the U.S. and in Italy and Spain and Germany. And so, uh, but I live in Portland, and I thought, well, this is interesting because I'm not as tech savvy as I'd like to be, and I just want to see what this is all about and see how I can create something to, you know, motivate my artists to stay afloat and also learn something new. Okay. Wonderful. Amy? Um, so I'm I work at Penda and our, my hours got cut, so I like a lot of free time. So I'm choosing that time to like edit all my photos that I have that I haven't like touched in a while. And it's just going out and shoot more, even though it's, it's kind of dangerous, but like it's like what I could do only because I can't really do anything much. And then that's just like what I'm planning to do is just go out and shoot more and just edit why I have the free time to do it. Nice. I Fun hear you. Time. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. What? Uh, I was going to say, I hear you on that, Amy. Like, uh, I had just a bunch of footage that I've just been hoarding. And I, last night, I like finally started, or like a couple of nights ago, I finally started editing it. And it's kind of nice to like, I don't know take a brain escape from stressing out about world stuff <laughs> yeah. for me, like, a little <laughs> while. Yeah. How about Goldie? Um, you it seems like you just joined. Goldie, I think your microphone's muted. You might want to unmute your microphone. We'll take, uh, while well, Goldie's figuring that out, um, we'll have Maeva check in. Yeah, hey. Um, so for me, I've been talking to a friend and been wanting to like do a project to document the whole situation. Uh, so we've been putting that together and this workshop would help, you know, like, like help how to tie things together. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Goldie, were you, able, were you able to get your mic to work? Looks like maybe no. I think I kind of skipped over Clementine too. Right. Oh yeah, sorry, Clementine. Rude, I'm so rude. That's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm interested um, in how artists are kind of um, staying on top of creating during this time. Um, like most of my there friends are welcome. artists or You're musicians. Um, so it's like just seeing them struggle and um, maybe for some people it's good to be kind of this quarantine. It lets them create the work they need to, but for some people it's more damaging. So I think that's interesting to look at too. Yeah. Goldie, how are you? Finally got my microphone to work. Um, <laughs> wouldn't for a while, but uh, just with everything going on, it's hard to get things done. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do with this film? Um, I mean, with it's for like, I, I'm not sure, but I feel like it could be used for something to okay. maybe remember, maybe use for other things. Okay. Um, anybody else before we move forward? I think of that was everybody. Okay, so just to give you guys an overview of what's gonna happen, I'm gonna present sort of like, sort of a little bit of the the theory and practice of filming with your phone, and then I'm going to demo. Um, I'm going to demo an iPad, um, which is a sort of like using an iPhone um, and how to use uh, i iMovie. And then I'm going to demo um, an Android phone, which is my phone, um, and how to use something called Power Director. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to get good shots, how to get good sound, um, and sort of good practice using using a phone. Um, and then, and then I'll show, do a little bit of a demo. We can talk a little bit, and then we'll be good. Sound good? Sound good? Okay. Hey. Yes. yes. Chime in. Use you, use your words because I can't always see your reactions because there's eighty of us. No, there's thirteen, but still, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look here. Um, is everybody? Can you guys see my screen? I'm on aesthetics right now. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. So we're going to just really, I mean, these are sort of like how all filmmaking breaks down. And by the way, if you don't want to use your film to do that or use your phone to do this, you're welcome to use what other device, what other else devices you want to. This is not limited to a phone, but we figured since we're not checking out equipment right now, um, that this is something that you can be using. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk about audio, video, and lighting. And how do we make, how do we make those things look and sound as good as we can given our handheld device? So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is audio. I think this, um, this might be self-explanatory. Um, one of the things that you find is that once you're somebody that works with audio and film, you're immediately irritated with everybody because they won't shut up. That's why they say quiet on set. Um, so really try and isolate whatever you're filming to be in a quiet place. Um, or if you can't, if you can't do that, it's, it's really, I think it's helpful to get a reference shot. So like um, if you're by a busy street and you're doing a close up shot, like an interview with somebody, it probably makes sense to get a wide shot of that street or something so that people know where that sound's coming from. Laura, I think your uh, turn off your phone. I think what's going on is okay, I got it. There we go. Sorry awesome. about that. Thank you. No worries. Thanks for. I'm glad that you're in Google Meetings now. Awesome. Yeah, it took a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, good job. Good technology stuff. Um, so anyway, shoot a reference shot if it's not clear where that sound is coming from. Obviously, avoid um, fridges and noisy places or dogs barking. As beautiful as a sweet dog is. Um, there's something, there's a trick that they say for uh, people that do filmmaking is they tell you to put your keys in the refrigerator when you turn it off. So 
first turn off the refrigerator if it's humming, and then they tell you to put your keys in there. Because if you go and shoot at somebody's house like a documentary and you leave and their refrigerator's off, they're going to be pissed off at you because their stuff's going to go bad because they won't realize that you would turn, they'll forget. Um, but if you leave your keys in there and you try and get in your car, you'll be like, oh yeah, I need to plug that refrigerator back in. Um, and I've actually used that and it was effective. Um, okay, so let's see here. Next. Um, also, if you have any kind of um, microphone device, it's incredibly helpful. You're gonna get a lot better sound um, if you have a wired lav mic. Um, if you have access to Amazon right now, um, lav mics, I think we have suggestions in the link that I put in the chat. Um, we have suggestions for microphones for your, for your phone. Um, you'll notice this is a mini jack. Um, they make adapters. So for iPhone, they have mini to lightning adapters. For Android phones, they have USB-C to um, mini adapters. Or you can just get microphones that straight up have a USB-C input or a um, lightning input. So um, what I would say is we put some, uh, JLU did some, some sleuthing on Amazon to find what, what we thought were good recommendations for microphones and tripods and stuff. So just take a look at that. If you can't do it, no big whoop. So the other thing is, we don't want you to get sick in the process of making this film. So um, if you are filming yourself or family members that you're already around and you're not social distancing with them, it's not a big deal. But if you are gonna do what's called Vox Pop, like man on the street interviews, uh, I obviously keep your six feet of distance. The, pro the trouble with audio is the further you get away from the recording device, the, the, the signal gets weaker and weaker. So, um, and that's the same thing for lighting. So if you can get close enough, the other thing is ask people to speak up if you need to. So, um, but do it safely uh, when you film. So uh, I think it's really common on any kind of camera, but especially phones, we just press the record button and shoot whatever. Um, but actually it makes a lot of sense to think of just, when you're making your film, it probably makes sense to think about a shot list of what you actually wanna do. So yesterday I went out and shot a little stuff and I didn't have a shot list and I just immediately just started filming a bunch and it, and it sort of helps you organize what you want your film to be about in the first place. And then think about the different types of shots that you want. Again, being careful about social distancing, um, don't forget to get a wide shot for context of where you're at, but also consider um, getting close-up shots. About 70% of movies are close-up shots. And that's for a reason, because you have more emotional con connection to people or you can see more detail when you're in close. So um, don't be afraid to do a close-up shot unless you're social distancing, in which case you should be afraid <laughs> um, and keep your social distance. Um, also keep in mind composition. How many people are familiar with the rule of thirds? Just chime in if you are. It's like Clementine, Maeva. Yes. I am. Okay. I am. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So basically that just means don't bullseye everything. Don't put everything in the middle of the shot. Um, this is an example of using the rule of thirds here. So, um, you know, they have the sun on this and they have the horizon line on this horizontal third and the person right here. Think about when you're shooting somebody right now, we're all, um, we're all bullseyed right now, like what we're filming on our computers. But honestly, if I was going to interview somebody, I'd put them, if you guys didn't see where I'm standing in my video, um, I, I would put, I would be looking this way across the screen. So give them maybe some nose space when you interview them. You can have them talk directly into the camera, direct address is fine. Um, but if you do do an interview setup, think about putting them along one of those third lines of the screen. Um, the other thing is, careful, I'm going to do this, I'm going to demonstrate it, careful of too much headspace. It does not make sense to have a big, like, chunk of space above somebody's face. Try and frame people so that you're using the space 
efficiently, you usually want their, their eyes along the top third line of the screen right here. So that's sort of we're, what we're trying to do is a little bit more controlled filmmaking rather than just go around and shoot everything you see and just record everything. Um, we wanna start thinking artistically about how we frame these shots. Um, and I didn't put this, um, I didn't put this in, the, in the presentation, um, and, but I can show you guys it when, I, when we demo stuff. I would put your, your, if you're doing a handheld camera, put it in the highest recording uh, resolution possible. Most phones now shoot 4K. Um, if you have an iPhone, I think iPhone, most iPhones now shoot 24P, which is like um, sort of looks more cinematic. I would shoot in that. Um, but try and use the highest resolution possible because your phone is not as good as um, a professional cam camera or camcorder. So try and have it in the highest resolution possible. I would also be cautious about the frame rate. What I just said about 24p, I would do either 24p or 30p for your frame rate. That excludes though, if you wanna do slow motion. So if you do slow motion, that's totally legit. It's a higher frame rate. Um, just don't use it for everything unless you're going super artistic, which go for it then. Okay. Um, camera support. Um, there are these things, they're called gorilla pods. How many people are familiar with them? Yes. Okay, yes. Yes. I have to, give me just a second. I'm gonna grab a couple examples of that. Give me a moment. I have one right here. Cool. Okay, um, I cannot extol these enough, so I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. Um, these are sick, I love these things. So you can mount, most, most cameras, there's actually some for, for smartphones, they're little, and we actually check these out at Metro East, at the moment we're not, obviously. Um, but these are awesome, you can make, almost anything a tripod out of these. Um, and they articulate so you can wrap around, wrap around things. They have a little level here to make sure your shot's level. I love these things. Um, I've used these before when I was backpacking because I didn't want to carry a super heavy tripod. I just like took a, mounted this on a stick um, and put it in the middle of a field and I was able to do like a, a time-lapse, like a nighttime time-lapse with a GoPro. So I love these. And then um, you can go handheld. Obviously, uh, the, the point of this contest is content, not you know perfect professional quality. So um, what I would say is, if you don't have any of this stuff, that's okay. Um, if you if you if it's something that you want to round out your um, your sort of DIY filmmaking kit with, then you should. Click on the links that we have available um, in, I put it in the chat, but I'll put it again. Um, but click on the links to, I think there's uh, stuff for the tripod and there are links for the microphones and a couple other things. I can't remember all of it. Okay, so handheld, the big thing is just stability. Um, you really wanna kind of like force yourself into a, like dig your elbows into your gut and make yourself into a human tripod. Um, the other thing is, do not shoot vertically. That is lame. I know, I know that, um, I know that like Instagram, they're all about vertical videos, blah, blah, blah. That's awesome, but for this, we're trying to post it on Facebook, YouTube, or Vimeo. Our eyes are not vertical slits. They are horizontal. That is how we see. Shoot, turn it sideways. And I would recommend this in general. I think it's so easy. It's sort of like a subconscious thing that we rotate our phone vertically. Uh, but I would not for this, unless you plan to do some crazy sort of like triptych thing where you put like three images in a row or something like that, make sure that you're shooting 
um, vertically, or sorry, horizontally. Uh, this is one of my pet peeves, and I often will tell people, turn it sideways. Okay, just a moment. Um, camera movement, if you have a tripod, obviously a pan is a left and right movement. Um, a tilt is an up and down movement. I would not recommend zooming too much with your phone because it's not an actual optical zoom. You're just zooming in closer to the pixels and that's why stuff gets blurry. Um, newer phones do have like zoom lenses. So I know Google Pixel has a zoom lens. It's like a two times zoom. Some phones have really awesome wide lenses. Uh, I would say take advantage of those different uh, types of focal lengths if you can, but I would not recommend zooming while you're doing video. Uh, it'll just get blurry and crappy. So the reality is you have to become the zoom. Okay, I'm gonna pause for just a second because I've been yapping for a while. Does anybody wanna ask any questions? And don't be shy. This, um, you know, this is the new world of of being in a group. Is it's so go ahead and if you have any questions, go ahead. So this doesn't have to be on a phone if we do have access to a camera. Nope. Okay. And is it there, can, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, is there a time limit for it? Uh, it's 30, 30 seconds to sixty seconds long. Okay. But I will say that I will say this. We will not slight you if it's longer. If it, if you want to do something that's like you feel like is more meaningful, um, then go for it. Okay. And it is longer. I know Facebook for a while they had this thing like the minute documentary. Uh, Cat now to answer your question is no, we haven't done. Oh, J Lu, thank you for handling that. Any other questions about aesthetics and that type of thing? Um, while we're talking about, I, I skipped this in tripod and, and camera support. So we have these links. Um, if you do have a tripod, I recommend the Joby tripod's awesome. Also, I don't know if Goodwill's still open, but if it is, you can usually get tripods for super cheap that are used. And then this right here is like a phone mount for, you basically just put your phone, it's a clamp that you put your phone into. And then it's rotatable and I just took it off of there. Um, but basically this is, this is a tripod mount. This is a little screw mount for your tripod. But um, I would definitely, I would recommend using a tripod if you can. And the mounts are pretty inexpensive. I'm just gonna move this into the shot here. Um, can people see this monstrosity? So this is an iPad mount. Um, I can't. This was like 12 bucks. I'm using a light stand right now because later on I'm gonna demo the technology and I need to be able to have another camera on it. But um, you can also get a mount for your uh, for your iPad. There's also something else called an iographer which is a, um, it has handles, like a handheld way to do things, um, but you can, it also has a tripod mount on the bottom of it, and they're super useful. And I will say, iPad footage looks pretty gorgeous. So does, I mean, a lot of phone footage, I actually consider my, my, my hand computer, my cell phone, to be like my C camera. Um, because it can shoot 4K, I've had a situation where I had camera A and B crap out, like I didn't have enough battery, and then, well, guess what? I'll shoot wide shots with this. Okay, any questions? No. Okay. No. Cool beans. We're gonna move on. Go ahead, feel free to interrupt. Yeah, if here's the iographer. Oh, thank you, Cat Meow. You're welcome. There's yeah. also this cool lens that um, there's three lenses it comes with. Um, it's a wide lens, a macro lens within the wide lens, and then there's a telephoto that they just, they screw off. See, pretty cool. Juicy. And then there's the place that you put in the tripod there. Um, Cat Meow, are those, I have a question, does OpenSig still have that? 
do they still check those out? We don't, we don't check them out because we're letting, um, we've got a partnership with McLaren Youth Facility. Oh, cool. They're using our I, iPad kits. I think actually I misspoke. There are two kits that we still check out, but we don't currently have classes on using them. Yeah. And we're, yeah. right now we don't, we're not checking anything out. So. Right. <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> cool. Okay. So I'm going to keep moving here. Give me a second and I'm going to present screen. Okay, so in general, like I said, I wouldn't use Zoom. Um, a little bit about exposure. I think uh, most most on the I iPad, the just the Photos app, or on uh, Android phones, you can manipulate exposure. Um, I would avoid too too dark of shots because they will sort of auto adjust and whatever ends up coming out will be um, probably kind of blurry. It's, it'll have a lot of what's called gain um, noise from there. So um, this is a picture of me in the dark making bananas foster because I like cooking food with fire. Um, but the, the consequences of, of too dark of a setting is you, you also, um, a lot of times it's a little blurrier because your shutter compensates. I don't even know, and to be honest, I don't know enough about phones to know if, what their shutter speed is like. I don't even know if you can manipulate that. Does anybody know of any programs that actually allow you to manipulate a phone or an iPad shutter? On the iPhone, I think the it's Flim Pack or Filmic. Filmic, thank you. Yes, yeah, that's it. Filmic is I that. Think that one will do it. I think that's the go-to. I think even for Android, Filmic is sort of the okay. Looks like Filmic and Movie Pro. Yeah, those Filmic is definitely. I've seen that a lot. If you want to dial in your your settings more on your phone, I would definitely recommend Filmic. Just because the problem with the problem with both Android and um, the stock um, iPhone camera app, they do a lot of really cool stuff, but locking things down so that your your exposure is not changing all the time um, or your focus is really hard it's a it's very irritating um, the other thing don't shoot people against against um, a window unless you have a light on their face in which case it's okay which is exactly what I think they did here so they had, this woman with the Santa Claus hat, they shot her without a light on her face and then they put a light on her face. This looks like somebody just put an LED light. Um, how many people have shot um, have shot a photo where somebody's against a window and you can't see their face? Be honest. I have. I have. I have. I okay. have. See, this is good. Honesty. We're sharing the shame. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Speaking, I was um, for new people that came into the to the um, into the Google meeting. Just so you guys know, I'm recording this. I just need to make sure that I have consent from everybody to to record. You have my consent. Okay, thank you, Catmail. You have my consent. Thank you, Spencer. That's Spencer. I work out with him in his garage. Hey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so the next, let's move on. Um, so I'm going to skip this video, but if you want an example of a one minute long video that I think does a good job of like sort of telling a story in one minute, or do you guys, I have a question. If I put this in the chat, can you guys take a minute to watch it? Can we do that? Yes. Okay. So what I would say is yes. mute your microphones, click on the link, and I'll give you guys a minute to watch it.
Okay, we're going to do two minutes. I inserted another link, and this is actually from a film with your phone class that we did with um, Donate Life Northwest. So I'd check out that other link too. It's 30 seconds long. When you're done watching, please click um, go into the chat and say you're done. Um, if you're having trouble finding the chat, I'm going to screen present again. The chat is in the top right-hand corner of your screen, this right here. Spencer and Holly, have you guys... <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's see, Goldie. Okay. Goldie had to cool leave. Beans. Okay. Can I, do you guys mind? Can we move forward? Any any names? Cool. Okay. So the whole point of that video, and then the other one from um, Donate Life Northwest. The first one is about like, you know, in one minute how quickly you can tell a story. And obviously, we don't have the Hollywood budget to make something like that. Um, but the the second one is a good example of a film with your phone class that we taught. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. If you want to make it crazy, I say go nuts. But if you want to do something more simple, just having people talk from the heart is a really good method. Okay, so this is the part where we actually demo some of the gear. Um, how many people have iPhones? I do. Okay. I, I do. I do too. I do. Does anybody have an Android phone here? Silence. <laughs> if you have an Android phone, there are instructions. I have an Android, I have a Pixel, so I'm, I'm a fan of Android. Um, nobody, nobody but me has an Android phone. Laura? You're the only one. I'm the only one. Okay, fine. Then I don't need to demo it. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna demo the I, off the iPad. I'm gonna talk a little bit about using iMovie. Okay, and actually that is there are there are definitely other programs that you can edit with on your um, iPad. But I think iMovie for most people it comes pre-installed. If it's not, it's like five bucks, and it's it's pretty good. So give me a second, and I have to queue it up so we can use it.
So um, for open SIG peeps, um, there is um, in, in Google Meet, there's an, you can actually download Google Meet for your iPad. Um, and you can actually, uh, you can use that to, um, well, I'm going to turn some stuff off. You can, you can broadcast from an iPad and Google Meet. Bizarrely, on an Android device, I still can't broadcast directly from the device, um, which is why I had the light stand set up with the um, iPad holder so that I could look down at my, um, at my device. The other thing, if you're interested in playing, um, if you're interested in remotely playing games uh, with with your friends, like we actually have some friends, we're playing a game called Pandemic. <laughs> it's a it's a group uh, it's a group game where you it's a cooperative game where you actually play against the game. You can actually use an iPad or iPhone setup to remotely play a board game with people. It's a little bit tricky, but if you have something um, that you can mount your iPad on, it's pretty sweet. Okay, um, give me a second here. I turn off my camera. Okay. So Okay, so everybody can see the screen broadcast of the iPad. I'm going to click home. And there, it's a little bit laggy. It's not perfect, but I also think because this is an older iPad that it's a little bit slower. So we're going to go to iMovie. Um, I have some lovely footage of me mowing the lawn in slow motion, which the slow motion on the iPad is pretty sick. I really like it. Um, you can't see it very well here, but it's just lovely how this thing just blazes through all the grass. Spencer, you guys have uh, you guys have a push mower too, right? Yeah, it's great. Who else? Does anybody else have a push mower or enjoy push mowers? I also have a push mower. It's a good workout, right? Good core. Yeah. And it's kind of satisfying, you know, like the slice. Yeah. I don't have one, but they look cool. Yeah. If you want to get swole, <laughs> push mowers are the way. Get yoked. <laughs> um, okay. So here's, here's iMovie. Um, if you press this uh, plus button, you have the option of either a trailer or a movie. Trailers are kind of fun. And if you wanted to, like, you could totally do, if you wanted to do like a daily show style, like this edition of Corona video or what are we calling it? Co-video. We're going to discuss staying healthy. Like this would be a perfect opportunity to do that. And they have a bunch of different kind of like, like adrenaline, <laughs> Bollywood, all these different things you could use. Um, but I'm not going to do a trailer. Um, I'm going to go with creating a movie. And again, this is, you can do this on your phone or a tablet device on an iPad. Uh, there's different ways of selecting what you want. So let me kind of preface this. It will, it's going to automatically create a timeline for you out of whatever you select. So the less you select... Let's say you don't want to plop everything in a timeline right away, then you just pick one thing. So, um, and there's different ways of looking at this. So you can just click the items that you want to go in there, but that doesn't give you a chance to really preview what, uh, if, if you just shoot a bunch of stuff and you want to plop it all in the timeline, then just click on them and t tell it to select all of that and then create movie. But if you want to do something a little bit more controlled, Click on video and let's see. Uh, so this is actually me talking. I was testing the microphone. But um, if, if you want to, you can actually like change the range of what you're seeing. Each one of these things is a different video. And then you'll see that little check mark there. You can either play it, which 
the delay is, is, is too much for you to actually see the playing, sorry. Um, or you can just select the portion that you want and press check and it will, um, it will throw that into the timeline. Um, so you can kind of like peruse stuff and if you think it's garbage, then you don't need to put it in there. Um, I have a wide shot. This story could be about the lawnmower. So let's say I did those things. I picked those three things. Pick that. And then as a twist, I have a shot of the shovel that we use to pick up dog poop in our backyard, just to really blow people's minds. Um, and some artsy fartsy shots of our clothesline. And then a shot of the last of our snowman. So I'm double checking, that's checked. It'll have this little highlighting here to, if you have something that's been high, um, you selected. Okay, then you say create movie and it will automatically drop it into your timeline with fades. So I'm not a big fan of fades uh, for everything. They're, they're obviously they're good for some stuff. Um, so I would say you can get rid of those fades just by clicking on that little in-between thing. That's the transition. You can do uh, cross dissolves, um, different types of fades, slide um, sort of like can make it, here, let me show you. Do like it slides in. Uh, for right now, I'm just gonna put that as none. Some of the sort of easier uh, editing stuff, if you wanna cut, like smooth something out, you just grab the side of it and move it. And then you can actually, um, I think there's somewhere where you can split the clip. I'm missing where to split the clip. There is a way where you can, I think you can just actually split the clip in half. But I don't know where that is right now, so. Nope. Um, you'll also notice on the bottom here, uh, you see these waveforms. I do that in the top right-hand corner. There's that little waveform. Just click on that waveform and you'll be able to see the audio that goes with the clip. And I, I prefer to have that on because it, it kind of is a good marker for um, when people are talking. Uh, I think it's really useful uh, visual reference. If you want to undo something, just hit this little back arrow in the corner, top or that one that just got highlighted. So to move stuff around, also easy. Hold it down, select it, and then drag your finger with the thing and move it wherever you want in the timeline. Uh, if you want to add more video, you can, um, iMovie kind of has it by like different types of, of stuff, but I can, I can just go to all and I can add more video if I want to. And to do that, I just hit the plus and then I've added that more video. If you want to add audio, sadly, this is a controlled device, so I have no sound on this. I have no music, but you can do sound effects. Let's do uh, bell tower. And that will go in wherever your playhead is. That's that white line that goes up and down. So um, the bell tower, I can... So far, I'm having, I'm struggling trying to move that. Has anybody been able, does anybody know how to move audio in? I can trim it, but does anybody know how to move audio in iMovie? Have you ever done that? Or just drag it, like touch and drag it. I'm trying to, and I don't think it, it does not want to play nice. So unless I'm screwing this up, I, it, it could, I don't know, I don't know why it doesn't want to do that. Like. If, oh, now I'm seeing something. If you want to split it, it looks like if you look at the bottom of the screen, I'm not, I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but I, it shows me that I can split. See that bot, the very bottom there? Um, 
it says split background and duplicate. That's how I split a clip. Now I'm seeing it. You can also detach audio or duplicate a clip. So I can take the audio off and then I'm still struggling moving it around. I don't understand that. If anybody can help figure out this riddle and share, that'd be great. Hey Seth, I'm able to force push it. I can just hold it down and push a little bit harder and move it around on mine. Oh, you are right. Okay, thank you, Spencer. Yeah, um, sure. That's the magic of screen or uh, crowdsourcing. So hold it for longer and then you can move it. Thank you. And then move it wherever you want. Um, you can also adjust your audio levels. Um, let's see here. I've done my sound effects. Believe. Hmm. Volume. You can adjust the volume on it. So if you want to make it louder or quieter, easy. If you want to put in slow motion, you can hit speed. Um, going to one of my uh, my shots, if I hit the, the gear icon in the top right-hand corner, there's all sorts of um, different effects that you can put on. Which, if you want to do that, go for it. You can actually do themes, too. If you want to do that, go for it. Um, but once you're done, let's say you have your movie cut the way that you want it. Looks like that applied it to everything. Um, by the way, I shot this. Uh, iPads have a 4K mode. So I shot, I shot this in 4K 30p because I want the highest resolution possible because wherever you upload it to, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to step on it. So if you do Vimeo, Facebook, or YouTube, it's going to step on it. I hit done. I have my movie. And actually, I'm going to pause real quick. Are there any more questions? Are there any questions about iMovie besides the ones that I asked? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Okay, and feel free, you guys. This is totally this is a safe what questions, space. What questions did you ask already? Because my internet was breaking up. Oh, I I think uh, Spencer helped me do it. Uh, moving audio, you just have to hold down on the piece of audio for longer. Yeah. And then if you want to adjust audio or slow things down, you can adjust the speed. You can adjust the volume. Um, oh, and I forgot, I didn't include titles. So if you're doing, um, if you're trying to put titles over a piece of footage, you just click on titles. Come on, here we go. And there's a big variety pack of titles that can do that, that you can pick. And you can like lower third them or center them or any of that stuff too. Yeah. Did you do cutting? Uh, I did. Um, I did. So. Um, you can either grab the edge or you can click on the thing itself. I'm going to get rid of this title stuff under actions. And you can tell, you can move it to a place where you can split it. And then I'm going to click on there and I can split that in half in twain. Cool. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else? Um, one of the nice things about iMovie is it's very similar to Final Cut, which is like iMovie just more stuff. Um, so if you learn how to cut in iMovie, then you've, you're partway there to understanding how to cut in Final Cut. The other thing is you can, let's say you have iMovie on a desktop computer, you cut your iMovie, on, or you cut your video together on an iPad or an iPhone, you can actually transfer that to iMovie on your um, desktop. The other thing, let's say, let's say you have a desktop app for editing um, and you shoot everything on your iPad. This is something we do pretty regularly. 
You just need to plug in your iPad and Final Cut and iMovie will both see that as like a media device and you can import uh, media directly from the iPad. There's also a, when you, if you select the, like an audio file, mm -hmm. uh, there's like a kind of like toolbar on the bottom mm -hmm. and it's split background duplicate. If you select background while with that like audio clip selected, it turns the volume down, I think, so that you can have like two tracks at the same time. So if you wanted to have like music, you would select oh. your piece and then hit background and then it like makes it a green track like you see. Oh, and cool. Quieter than your main track. Genius. So you can actually have two tracks, you could have your sound effects and you can have your music. Yeah, or like your dialogue and like sound effects or music, yeah. Let's, oh, I was hoping that we could do three layers of background, but apparently there's only two. Okay. Yeah, that's the other thing. So we sent some links for free music sites. Um, CC Mixter is really good. Freesound.org if you need sound effects. Um, there's plenty of places to find free music and sound effects out there. Uh, if we want to play it on our channels, it needs to be copyright free. So FYI. Anything else about editing in iMovie? Um, J. Lou, do you mind pasting the link to the um, to to the blog on the website in the chat again? So if people just as a reference for people. Oh, Thank I you. had I had something. If folks are using iPads, that's come up before. Um, when you go to transfer your files, if the movie's too long, it won't transfer sometimes because of the storage space. But if we're just doing 60 second or a minute, it shouldn't be okay. a problem. Muy bien. Um, thanks, J. Lou. J. Lou put in freesound.org and all that stuff. Um, if you look in the chat too, uh, our blog, this metroeast.org COVID online workshops, if you click on that, that is like a kitchen sink of everything. So. It, there's actually tutorials for iMovie and there's tutorials on how to shoot with your iPhone. Okay, because so- Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Um, we're gonna, okay, let's see here. Oh no, my screen broadcast stopped. Give me a second. Okay, so heading back to iMovie, I'm gonna click done. And if I want to share it, it's the same thing as with all of your iPhones uh, and Apple devices. It's the little square with the arrow at the bottom there. And I have the option of sharing to Facebook, YouTube. Um, I don't see Vimeo on, well, maybe there might be Vimeo. If you have the Vimeo app, I think that you can share it to Vimeo. So let me, um, I'm gonna switch back. For uploading, you can put it on, I would put it on YouTube, Vimeo, or Facebook to get to give people a little bit about the nuance between YouTube and Vimeo. YouTube is the garbage dump and Vimeo is like the boutique. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to like show off your work, Vimeo is pretty nice because um, there's less like, advertisement there it's just a cleaner interface um it also one of the things i really like about vimeo is let's say you upload your video and you're like ah crap like i screwed it up i need to recut this um you can actually swap the video so um you can you can upload a new version of it but you won't lose any you don't have to change the link and you won't lose any of the viewership if you're on youtube I don't know if that's a feature yet. Um, um, you might, it's possible it could be if you pay for it, but um, on YouTube, it won't let you swap out the video. So if you screw something up and wanna reload it, and let's say you already have 500 views, well, then you're gonna have to start from zero on that versus on Vimeo, you can actually just swap the video file out. Um, a note about Facebook. 
Spencer, will you tell them about what's up with putting YouTube videos on Facebook and all that stuff? Oh, about how they promote it organically. You don't have to pay for the advertisements and promotion. Yeah. So Spencer works um, works with multiple federal agencies. He's um, the media person for them. Yeah, I'm social media manager for a few federal agencies for the USDA. And thank you, Seth, for teaching me all that I know about <laughs> video. It's been pretty useful. Um, using it right now, actually, on a side project. But uh, yeah, the videos you upload to Facebook or Twitter and presumably other social media accounts as well are they're promoted organically. Like normally you have to pay for people to see a post, but they will promote your video without having to pay extra. So you get more engagement from your audience for free. Thank you, Spencer. Yeah, sure. Also includes Instagram since that's like a Facebook uh, property. Thank you, JLU. Um, okay, so we covered that. We talked about Facebook and stuff. So um, anybody that makes a video, you can send them to at city at metroeast.org and she'll post them. We will probably have it on YouTube uh, and then we'll probably put it on our cable channels as well. Um, there's no guarantee of either of those things, but that's the idea. Uh, and it's 30 to 60 seconds long is the ideal length. We are, um, we're, we're going to be selecting, it'll be at random. Um, we're going to select at random who wins the prize, which again, it's probably going to be like, a um, a, uh, like a gift card for a local business because we're trying to support local business. Um, resources, I put this in the link, but um, if you go to this, this link here, everything that um, we've talked about, and also, so all the registration-y stuff, and then um, we, have, uh, we have tutorials for different stuff here, and then recommendations for equipment, what equipment you want, might wanna buy. Um, also, if you need to get copyright free videos, Wikimedia Co Commons is awesome. And then copyright free music or sound effects, CC mi mi Mixer, free music archive, freesound.org. And everything needs to be in by March 31st. Um, so there's a second part to this, which is there is a second part to this class. Um, it's next week. And what we want to do is we just want to check in with people. Um, and there's two check-ins, and you can register for either. Um, so Thursday the 26th from 9.30 to 11, or you can do uh, Friday the 27th from 6.30 to 8, and J. Lou will be running that. Um, if you want to share this, this workshop with friends, we have um, another one that JLU is going to teach this Monday. So we're trying to get as many people as we can. We have it set that up to 30 people can join. Google Meetings supports up to 100 people. Uh, so if you have anybody that you want to share this experience with, just use the link in the chat that I sent. And we'd love to have more people participating.